Hello, uh, my name is Vitor. I am talking a little bit about uh, the journey of five foods in uh, resilience culture. So let me share my screen. Um, here it goes. So, um, so I am going to talk a little bit about this journey in iFood, and also I will uh, give some deep dive in two of our current uh, practices that you have here today. So it's Jenga and Sherlock Holmes practices. So um, talking a little bit about me, uh, my name is Vitor Campos. I am a 15 years old uh, engineer. I am here at iFood uh, for from the last three years. So two years in the past, one year, and this last uh, time that I joined it. And I'm here in the resilience team, uh, working with ju not just KU's engineering, but also um, uh, with the team, we are responsible for the uh, load testing and stress testing and other time types of uh, like testing that we have here. So uh, in the first first point, uh, in the beginning, I would like to, to talk to you, what is iFood? So iFood is a Brazilian company, is a Brazilian tech company that, that connects restaurants, consumers, drivers, and grocers. So this is a food tech company uh, and we, um, are the, the, the biggest uh, tech comp food, food delivery company in Brazil. Uh, we just uh, achieved it. We just uh, achieved the, 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 uh, the uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we just uh, achieved the, the, the mark of 100,000 uh, 100, million orders per month. Uh, and also in peak time, we have like 250,000 uh, of requests per second. We have today more, more than 8,000 of services in production. We do like uh, 20,000 of uh, deployments per month. And now most of them are like Kubernetes services. And we have today 53 uh, clusters in production. So those are the big numbers uh, today in iFood. Uh, and like starting talking a little bit about the resilience uh, area inside here. So we know that uh, with the, the growing, we have this pain of the complexity. So this is the our current uh, ecosystem that uh, we have more than eight thousands of services communicating with each other. So what should we do? What should we start to look when we have this kind of complex and we need to improve the resilience of that? So coming back a little bit in the time, like before 2020, we have an um, area here in iFood that you know, like one um, chapter that we call it uh, hook. Uh, process. So, hook process were, uh, were aimed to um, improve the resilience here, doing like um, sessions, uh, meetings, and understanding the problems that we had, and also creating uh, loading tests and stress, stress testing in production. So, every day we were running like stress tests in production uh and we like we thought that we had uh resilience in that time we had we were uh outage proof but in 2020 we had this covid uh, pandemic and as a food tech a food delivery company we start to have uh, uh, even more um access and um orders inside the platform because the folks the people were locked uh, down in the in in the the, the home. So um, we have this Brazilian Valentine's Day that it was uh, in June twenty uh, twelfth, and we had this biggest outage ever in the history of a food. 
So it was like very, very, very uh, huge outage. And then we start to realize what should we uh, do to improve our resilience. So we create a team uh, focused on that. Uh, we start to uh, think about what should we um, have um, uh, inside here, like uh, if we if we need to implement KU's uh, engineering, what were the 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 risks? What were what were the the challenges that we had here? And also we do some kind of benchmarking with some solutions, some tools, and we choose to start with Litmus in that time. So it was the first uh, setup in Litmus back in 2020 in 2021. We start very small with some teams and some agendas, but most of them just proving the concept inside the, the company. In 2022 to 2023, we have this um, process to engage more teams. So engage more product teams, uh, teams focused on the, the core services, team more engaged on the checkout and cash services. And we start to do this war games. That is a game day uh, event, and also nuclear. Um, more focused on break some things and uh, like aleatory things and test if it, the uh, the platform were healthy. So in 2024, uh, we have uh, we start to like grow, grow up the team, the resilience team and we focus more and more in resilience and then we create two other practices here that was called jenga and sherlock holmes so i will talk a little bit about that right now uh, but just giving um this timeline about how it is the journey here so the biggest challenge that we have faced in the beginning of this year that the beginning of 2020 is we need to leverage chaos engineering and engineering discipline. So uh, despite of having the Litmus and chaos engineering team um, for uh, like uh, proceed, like doing some kind of experiment and so on, it was not uh, spread and it was not very used. So we had this uh, challenge about like leverage and uh, expand that. And uh, we should improve the platform uh, resilience as uh, like a whole. So we have this uh, food delivery that is uh, e-commerce. And we have like the, the the platform of order taking. So what supposed to be the, the points that they should improve uh, for uh, having more resilience and not like a single incident or single outage in a service does not com uh, compromise all the platform and the goal that we have in this time like in the beginning of 2024 it was uh having like a uh, 100 percent of the critical path covered by experience experiments so work with all the teams that were in, in uh, involved in this uh critical path uh to understand and cover uh, to create to uh, and to execute experiments uh, to cover 100% of that. So that was the scenario from scenario from the early 2024. The teams were running experiments in different ways. So some teams were using Litmus, but most of them were using um, like featured flags or to to change the configuration. Other teams were using uh, directly. The Kubernetes uh, comments to delete pods or to scale up or scale down. So uh, different ways for running the, running these pyramids. Um, lack of centralization of the documentation uh, of scenario. So we need to, uh, like in the steady um, uh, steady state or like the the scenarios that they would like to prove. To prove uh it was like very very uh spread in the like uh other tools like uh confluence and docs and so on so it was hard to keep that on, tr on track and understand what were being tested or, or validated or what was not uh so few indicators uh, of results so it was very hard to make 
uh, some track about that. So if he, some team or some area um, found any kind of bug or any kind of, should do any kind of fix or action points, it, it was not very, very easily to be tracked that. Um, lack of focus on the platform. So the teams were just focused on the area or some set of services, but not looking to all the 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 complete workflow or uh, service flow. So it was a very uh, big problem. And then lack of lack of the knowledge or usage of the tool. So um, the teams that were using Litmus uh know that a little bit but not too much and the other teams uh even the, didn't know what was what were litmus and chaos uh practices so that was a very big challenge about like culture and also habits to to perform the tests so that time we said we uh decided to uh like attack the action points that we had, the challenges. So in the first time I mentioned that the team were growing, growing up. So the point was the, the team should be uh, trained. So we invested some time to uh, training the, the team, the resilience team to provide support to the other team. So we spent some time on doing that and then we create an internal documentation, uh, and this documentation were more focused at the home. So we have some services when we have some uh, applications that have components like uh, the database or cache or um, maybe uh, mes uh, messaging like uh, Kafka, Kafka or something like that. Uh, we start to create this documentation based on the components that we use, like in you know, the tech stack that, that we were using inside uh, iFood. So, we if some the documentation were more focused on this, like uh, what should be the uh, experiment that you, you can use to um, like uh, validate the the integration between the service and also like a database like a push grid database or something like that so uh this is the kind of the the experiment that we can use like this um pod network here or, or something like that so it was this kind of documentation to be uh, more um direct to the point for to for the teams that could use the the the, the litmus tool uh, more like uh directly um, we provide also uh, all the teams training. So it was like a very huge process that we did here uh, to uh, create like internal workshops, internal um, training, and also uh, an agenda with each team to provide some kind of focus and training on the, on the platform, on the Litmus tools as well. So we need to improve the internal tools that we use internally to provide the governance about the, the scenarios and so on. So the agenda of the events and, and something like that. And we have this big, huge, uh, big change that we had uh, to do this uh, version migration uh, from the Litmus from two, uh, version two to version three. So it was a breaking change version that we spent some time to migrate everything from there. Uh, and we did that in the beginning of the, the, the year. Okay, so talking a little bit about the numbers of Litmus at iFood, we have Litmus here deployed in 17 uh, productive Kubernetes cluster and 13 non-productive clusters. We have currently 300 of active users in the platform, in this tool. Uh, we have today like 260 experiments uh, created there. So this is a little bit about the numbers and uh, a little bit about the evolution of the usage of Litmus inside the, 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 the company. So uh, I mentioned before that we started that on 2021 to 2020, 2020 to 2021. And then um, we start to, to increase our usage of Litmus and then it shows uh, 
by this X pyramids execution per month, uh, a big change uh, since 2024. So you can see that it was uh, right now, um, like in this average of to uh, 100 to 150 experiments runs per, per month, okay? So a little bit about our focus and on this last uh, year about this uh, practice. Um, showing uh, other numbers uh, related to the type of experiments that we are uh, running today, it's not very good in terms of like a variety of experiments, but um, Today we are using most uh, this pod network loss, also some pod net DNS error and network latency. Uh, and we think that we can explore more and more type of experiments based on in our cases. Cases. So it's um, a point that we are aiming to to um, increase this uh, variety of experiment types. Then uh, talking a little about a little bit about Jenga. So Jenga as the game. This is uh, for the people that doesn't know. This name is like a you have a structure of like pieces, uh, wooden pieces that we remove, like some of them, uh, one by one, and we need to keep the the entire structure uh, is still stable. So if it's dropped, you have like this. A game over. So the point about this uh, practice that here is um, verify the platform as a whole, the critical flow, uh, like in the the, the focus, uh, and remove some pieces. So I mean, like break some points about that, and verify if the the entire flow is still uh, uh, stable. So I mean, what what does it it, it means? Like uh, if the user, the the end user, can place an order, even if some pieces are uh, missing. So this is the focus, and it's, it's a focus like it's an event coordinated with several teams that they are um, like uh, impacted by this, like re responsible for this um, critical flow, and then the goal, as I said, is the order taking resilience so the the point the the major point about that is in the end of the flow i need i i can put like a, a order i can place an order okay so uh how we we did, did that so the first time we had to map the entire critical flow so we have this here that uh we have a service that each service has his own um, impact level, and the, the services that are participating of the, the critical flow of the order taking has this impact level as zero. So we had to, to collect all the services, check if is the if the impact level was uh, assigned correctly, and then uh, map that in a structure that we are um, uh, dividing that by the like mobile to like the application, user application to the backend, it's uh, endpoint, we map that and we create a, a flow. Uh, and then we identify and engage each re responsible team. And then we conduct, conducted a deep dive into each flow and map all the de dependencies. I mean, uh, the databases or the other component that were being used all the fallbacks and sequence breakers approaches or strategies. So we mapped everything in this critical flow and we assisted the teams uh, building the scenarios to be validated. So imagine that we went to the team and uh, asked to create the scenarios uh, that could, should be uh, validated in each like uh, uh, part of that, so each experiment. Then we define an agenda with the teams uh, to run these events, run these uh, game days in Jenga. Uh, then we collect the results and once by by, if, by week, 
we have this agenda with the teams and we provide the insights and we collect the action points and also we address that and or we collect the stats of that so it's uh, like entire flow uh checking then we support the teams with the action points if we um like if some teams need some kind of ins in, uh, insights about how to improve their resilience how to make it more like stable or like robust we provide this kind also of support some outcomes about jenga so we have run uh 17 jenga events since 2024 uh january uh we had this 2020 uh, 20, 22 impacted teams 36 36 services is tested and 160 bugs identified with 138 already fixed so some numbers about that um and like it was it the another point that i didn't put here it was like we built a very um reliable um relationship with the product teams and um, that we are um acting as a partner of them and it, it is um helping us to leverage this uh, resilience culture inside the company so it was a very good uh, outcome from this uh, Jenga. Uh, talking a little bit about Sherlock Holmes, like we have a Jenga with all the teams engaged, but Sherlock Holmes is a little bit different. So Sherlock Holmes is more related to I am going to some one people from the team from the resilience team. Uh, we start to identify one given service in the the structure in the ecosystem and break that or break the components about that. So the point is um, not sharing with the team responsible for that service or that uh, application. And then we collect the, the um, metrics about that service and check if there is, is there any kind of uh, hidden uh, weakness. So the point is testing or vari validating any kind of type of the service like critical or non-critical and we uh would like to measure the resilience of the service but also the observability if any kind of trigger or alert were triggered or if the inc any incident has been raised and what was the response time of the um incident uh responsible for the the incident like in kind of Somebody, if somebody is on call, what is the time of uh, responsibility responsibility of that? So this is the 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 focus of this Sherlock Holmes practice. We have uh, in this time we have just we had just two events of Sherlock Holmes where one were focused on the checkout service. We validate the communication of the service with downstreams. We checked uh, circuit breakers and fallback mechanisms and behave of that. Uh, some experiments based on pod network latency, and we measured the resilience of uh, and observability of the service. So some comment, some results of that of these events from March, uh, we could uh, see that the circuit breakers were not opened in that uh, test that we did, and we identified that the alerting uh, were not like uh effective and also um we did find that uh, some behavior some bad behavior of the net uh, natural type exper experiments so what i'm thinking about that talking about that so this is um in our kubernetes uh structure some experiments didn't work as expected because of the the nature of that so one point about that is these networking type experiments were uh, having a very not not expected behavior, but I, I can talk about that in the question and answers. Um, another um, another test that we ran, another event that we had, it was in May 2024, and it was aimed to test the cart service the same point but one it was for the checkout and the other what's the the cart service and we validate the same things 
but in the service, and you could take some kind of uh, outcomes about the functionality of the fallbacks. Uh, some general outcomes. So the point, the biggest point that we had here is we increased the adoption of the resilience culture by the teams. The teams from all the areas, completely different, were asking to join to the event. So it was a very good uh, effect about the, the tests. Uh, platform became more robust, robust in less uh, with less incidents. And also the resilience team became, became a reference to the other teams and you had centralized mechanisms and the action point tracking. And I'll, as we like to, to say here at AFood, we are just beginning. So some points, some future uh, actions that we are, um, we are uh, planning to have here. So build an internal CLI to integrate with Litmus. Uh, GitOps support with the issue much much closer observability increasing and expand and attend all the business units. I believe that they, we have we are on time. So thank you a lot for this opportunity to show a little bit about iFood resilience at iFood. So uh, we can open the question and show. Okay, so thank you, Prithivi. Um, All right, uh, uh, Victor, we have uh, a few questions. So one of them is from Tala. He asks, why is iFood running network loss experiment mostly any specific reasons? Sure. Um, iFood have a very, very hard, uh, have culture of having fallbacks for everything. And the fallbacks um, um, driven by the latency about like some kind of uh, connection. So because of that, we would like to test a lot of the security breakers. And this is the, the, the point about like uh, checking the response time of that communication. And then if the security breakers, breakers are opening and then test that. So it was the biggest focus on this, this experiments. All to check right. and so on, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter, the next question is: What is the biggest challenge you faced while implementing Litmus Chaos, and what has been your biggest gain? Um, the biggest challenge was the training training the teams um, uh, to this culture, and also the challenge about the Litmus itself. It was the some uh, problem that we face that related to attack one, like using a network latency, for example. So we have some services that connect to other services, uh, downstream services in the same other cluster, Kubernetes cluster. So when we attack one of them, uh, as Litmus uh, reserve the name service as IP to attack that, it is reserving the same IP and then uh, breaking more than one integration of that service with the others, you know? So it, this is a very big challenge that we have today. And we are like working to, to fix that. Sure, Ritter. Thank you so much uh, for answering these questions. I hope this helps the community. There's another question by Mario. Mario, I would request you to ask this question in the Litmus Chaos community Slack on the Litmus, uh, on the Kubernetes workspace. So, or maybe I can move this question to the, the Slack itself and uh, tag Witter. So thanks everyone for joining Witter's talk. Next up, uh, we have Saranya who's hosting the next session with uh, Vedant and Nadesh. So we'll, we'll move to that. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Have a great conference.